We are here in Barcelona, Spain, at the Mobile World Congress, MWC24, and we are at the Ericsson Pavilion. Again, learning and learning a lot as every year of the new developments in technology that are really value added for the telco industry, for communication service providers, and for the end users too. And there are so many new announcements here, but there is one in particular that we want to discuss today. And this is about, and I really to make sure that I'm saying this, AI intent-based operations as part of Ericsson Operations Engine. We are here, we have the privilege to be here with one of the global leaders from Ericsson who are behind the scenes and working on implementing this new technology advancement. Mr. Bradley, please tell us about yourself. Hi, Harold. It's great to be with you here oh, today. So my name is Bradley Mead. I head up managed services for Ericsson globally. I've been with Ericsson now for a long time, 29 years. Uh, it seems like only yesterday uh, I, uh, I joined Ericsson. Uh, I'm Australian, but I've had uh, the great honour and pleasure to work all around the world with, with Ericsson in the UK, in the US, uh, and now I'm based in, in Sweden, in headquarters. Um, so it's, a, it's, it's been a great journey. And, and I have a, a great team uh, supporting me all over the world, uh, delivering managed services to our important customers. We are so happy to have you here because we are learning more about how we can make our systems, our performance and organizations more efficient. Let's say, when we talk about AI intense based operation, is this a real matter? What is this about? That's a great question. <laughs> and, and what I want to share with you today is a motto we have in, in managed services that we've uh, we put in place from the beginning when I took this role nearly seven years ago. Okay. And that is, the motto is, we only deal in real. So wow. we, we don't want to be perceived as having marketing, just marketing material mm -hmm. uh, and uh, slideware. So I'm really proud to, to sit here today with this announcement and launch here um, that, that this is real. We have, we have uh, been working on intent-based operations for, for nearly four years to, to actually develop. Uh, and it started as a real research project to to look at going beyond machine learning to think about the world that we're, we're at today um, where 5G capability and our, our customers can start to, to actually think about using network slicing capabilities to actually deliver more value to their end consumers and increase their, their revenues. And if in that world of complexity, how, how are you going to service assure that? How are you going to ensure that the SLAs are actually delivered? Because it's, the level of complexity is it's not linear. We're talking exponentially different. So we, we started exploring how can we use machine reasoning to actually go beyond that and actually manage this com help us manage this com uh, complexity. And that's the journey we've been on. And so back to our, uh, our motto of only dealing in real, we weren't going to launch this until we had a proven proof, proof point with a real customer, you know, tested in the wild, if you, if you want to put it that way. Good way of putting it. And we're yeah. really pleased to have been able to work with, with DNB in Malaysia, which is a pure 5G network, uh, a unique customer in the world, I would say, but it's been a, an amazing collaboration to, to be able to work with them over nearly the last year to, to work through different scenarios, different use cases to prove our capability. And, and that's what we're sitting here, I guess, a celebration of both our teams, Ericsson and DMB, to make this real. But there, there is something very important also to mention here, and is that Ericsson was awarded because of this in Malaysia. There was an important announcement about an award. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, no, again, we, um, we won an award together, a mm -hmm. Glotel Award for this, this solution uh, last year. And again, that's, um, 
that's great recognition for our teams to, to be able to win that. Um, and also recognition from the industry that what we're doing is, is actually important to the industry uh, and acknowledgement that it's, it's actually in line with, you know, acknowledgement that these, these sorts of things are things and innovations that the industry needs, right? So uh, yeah. um, it's not an award for bragging rights. It's exactly. actually, exactly. it's actually, it's meaningful in terms of the industry acknowledging what we do is meaningful. Absolutely. And the 5G world, as you said, we need a lot of new things. The one that you're mentioning that it's really very successful case, because it's a use case that it's very successful. So what what we need in terms of artificial intelligence, automation, and managing complexity, as you say, in this 5G world, to be more effective, to managing these data-driven processes accurately, and at the same time to help decision makers to make better decisions and to have cost efficiency. Exactly. Um, and that's what the AI-based intent-based operations uh, builds on what we have with our foundation, with our, our standard Ericsson operation engine uh, capabilities that we have with, with all our customers around the world today, which is data-driven, we use machine learning, and everything is highly automated. That is the foundation that intent-based operations now sits on top of and leverages that inherent capability. So maybe I should just step back and for the audience, help them understand what are we actually talking about here? Yes. What, is, what does this mean? What is an intent? Now, in intent has, you know, this is something we use all the time, you know, statements of intent. And it's really about what we want to achieve or an, or an outcome. Um, now, the and and in this in this sense, in uh, in a telco network, with the ongoing complexity of the new networks, but actually to deliver a specific intent, which might be a performance SLA, a business outcome for a, a dedicated slice. So, uh, let me give an example. Fixed wireless access is a is an important use case that telcos are are using around the world okay. to to actually give consumers you know broadband capability in areas that traditionally they couldn't have that, which is great for for society. But that um, that slice or that service has a predefined service level performance outcome that consumers expect. It could be downlink speed, could be uplink performance, latency, all those different things. Now, you can define that intent for, for that particular, um, for that capability. Now, what the intent-based operations does is actually help you manage to that intent and actually even guarantee that that performance can be achieved. And what it does is it's monitoring the performance of, of that capability or that slice, and it can predict if that SLA or that performance intent is going to be breached in advance, which is great. It, it's saying, I think, I predict that, that your performance is going to degrade within the next two to four hours, and here's some possible root causes or actions that you could take to prevent it. So so that is valuable because totally. Yeah. Because it, it's actually impossible for humans to do the, the analytics to actually do that level of prediction. You know that and this is where really I think a great example of where AI is really complementing what we do as, as humans in managing networks. To, to make those networks perform much better, to standards that in, historically we could never have achieved without these, these sort of capabilities. So, and, and the other great thing about this is it does it in a very seamless but transparent way. We can see exactly what the machine learning and the machine reasoning is doing and, and how it's coming up with these pr predictions, so it's completely transparent, which is, I think, super exciting. And this is 
so new that maybe those stars in the past were taking like long time to be performed and maybe it's not the same level of accuracy. That's right. So now we have the opportunity, the possibility of doing that in a short, shorter term, short time, but with a higher level of accuracy. That's right, yeah. At the same time, we have more complex scenarios, more complex processes to be, that need to be managed, but we also have more tools, particularly when we use AI, automation, intelligence, in that will help us somehow to manage that diverse complexity that is generated because with all these, I would say, adds on and uh, an advancement. How can, what can you say about it? No, you, that, that's, that's spot on. That, that complexity uh, is, is key to, to, be, to be managed and there's, it, it, is, it is really impossible to manage the complexity yes. that there is today, mm -hmm. let alone what's coming in the future because complexity will, will only increase. As, as the demands um, and the digitization of society places on, on networks, and that, that is a positive thing because it's, it's adding value to society. But I guess we as consumers, we don't necessarily see what, what goes on behind the curtain, what happens behind our devices and, and everything that needs to be in place to actually give us the performance that we expect, right? And, and our expectations are high, right? So Absolutely. Based on your experience, and your hands-on experience also and with your global team also. What can you say, which will be your advice? And we will pick up some words that you mentioned. And in the benefits for society and the benefits also for corporations, definitely that we need to put that together. But if you talk about for the public sector, for the private sector, but also, but also for individual professionals that want to be involved in this new technology, that they like this and they want to learn. So, which would be your word for all these three areas, right? the, the, the public sector, the private sector, and also for individuals that are tech enthusiasts, I would say. Look, I think all our, our telco CSP customers uh, around the world, and um, you know, they've invested a lot in their networks and they continue to invest uh, a lot. Yes. Um, which is great. That capability is there um, uh, to, to add value to society and the consumers, whether it be us as normal, just you know, handset users or yeah. enterprises, yeah. you know, businesses, etc. Mm -hmm. I think we're now at the beginning of a, a new phase of, I, I would say, a bit of a buzzword, but digital transformation. Yes. I think the foundation capability is there. Absolutely. And the capabilities are now there to be able to support the the, the CSPs to actually deliver on that promise and, and AI is a key part of, of that um, because there's, there's actually no point in having the, the capability there if you can't assure that the, the outcomes can be delivered. So, so, so that, that's what's important about what we're, we're doing with uh, intent-based operations. Then the other part of your question, again, I think as an industry it's exciting times with this level of transformation that we're going on for all of us as humans. To, mm -hmm. It's a great industry to be involved in. Absolutely. Um, no, well, yeah. And there's new skills uh, yes. that, that uh, you have to learn to, to work yes. in, in this environment. And I really encourage young people um, that if you're you know, embarking on your university to cre career, you know, get into data science, data engineering, um, uh, and engineering in uh, electronic engineering in general, there's there's uh, you know great opportunities, and that's something we invest in in Ericsson Managed Service heavily is the ongoing development of our people. Um, they develop, they, they have skills in the inherent technology, whether it be radio networks, core networks, IP networks. They're multi-skilled in those technology domains. But on top of that, we've enhanced it. We've, we've, we've actually educated them in data engineering and automation engineering because it, it's all glued together. Um, and the people that are running these networks are the ones that know best 
how to use AI and how to use automation to help us manage this complexity. So it's an, I think it's exciting time for for anyone working in the ICT industry uh, at, at the moment, and uh, and I don't see that slowing down. To be honest, it's exciting times ahead. Absolutely, I mean, and and, and, that, and those are really great, great uh, words of advice because there are a lot of people and a lot of n the new generation that really want to be part of this, uh, what's happening, and they say, how can I learn this? Hey, where, can I, where can I learn this? Yes. And, and so we are usually answering those questions, trying to answer the question, yeah. but coming from you, a top leader in a, in a huge organization, as Ericsson is, I mean, that is really, really very valuable. And we want to thank you so much for your time and for all your insights that you share with us today. No, it's been a pleasure, Harold. Thank you very much. And just one last thing before yes, we leave, please. if that's okay. Yes, yeah, sure. You know, this is new. We've launched here today. This is this is start. This is the start of the journey in intent-based operations. It, it, it really is, um, and it uh, it's really the start of of going to the next level of autonomous networks. And you know, we work very much uh, with the TM Forum um, on their autonomous networks uh, methodology and approach. Uh, and this is built on a foundation of. You know, TM Forum uh, approach. So uh, again, this is just the start, and I know there's going to be a lot more exciting things to talk about on this journey in the future. So I hope we can talk again uh, sometime in the future and be able Absolutely. to give you an update. I am in, 100% in, definitely. We have part two, part three, whatever. How many of us? But I would love that to continue having this conversation because, uh, as you said, there are new things, you are learning all, every day. And we like to share this content, this knowledge with uh, everybody. Fantastic. So, so thank you very, very much it's for it. It's a pleasure. My thank pleasure. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Yes. My pleasure.